Hey, awesome. All right. Well, it is October, you guys. It's a new month, new goals, new everything, right? I always feel a sense of like peace, right? At the beginning of the month, I'm ready to like start fresh, wipe that like slate clean and start over. So it was a rough month. I don't know about you guys. September was kind of rough for me. Um, here's just one thing that I'm going to talk about tonight, but I was at Success Club 4 for, oh my gosh, probably the first three weeks of September. And um, it took me, <laughs> I was kind of down and out and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know what's going on here. And I, you know, fought in my head back and forth, right? Those self-limiting beliefs, like, like, oh my gosh, like, how can I lose my Success Club 10 streak right now in September? But you, I'm reading that Mastering Your Mean Girl, right? And it tells you to just shut the door on those self-limiting beliefs and those voices and that mean girl in your head and just go after it. And that's what I did. I literally just doubled down my efforts. I 10 times everything. And um, I think I ended at Success Club 12. So just past my, you know, and that's never what I want to do. I don't want to cut it down to the end. I'm always trying to read Success Club 10 by the middle of the month so that you don't have to do that little scramble at the end of the month. Um, but not every month goes to plan and I know we're all going to find that out and we're going to talk a lot about this on this call. Um, but we have lots going on this month. I don't know if you guys saw our team calendar, but we have like two team calendars because we have all of our team events on one calendar and then all of the actual like calls and little things we have going on on our other calendar. Um, so you guys, you are set up for success. Like there's so much for you guys. Um, between Hustle Club and all our team. We have team calls every Sunday. We have um, a new coach call in the middle of the month. We have our new coach training, which we're super excited about. Hopefully you guys have popped in there. We, Brian and I spent like a lot of the late last week finishing things up, doing the videos, tidying it up, and making that available for you guys. And I did go live on the team page talking a little bit about how I, um, I feel like I dropped the bomb on training. You know, like I feel like there was that missing piece to the puzzle where we would have these new coaches come in and yes, we had that training there, but it was like, I didn't have a way to keep track of if they were still going strong with it. I didn't have a way to like, you know, it wasn't really self paced enough to, you know, make it feel like I knew what was going on and they could check in with me and we could check in with them and we can recognize when they're hitting week one and week two and week three. And so I really am excited about this. Brian and I are super excited. This is the best training we've ever had in team rise up ever. And um, so make sure that when you sign a new coach that you're getting in touch with them. Obviously, talk to them on the phone before you get them into a chat thread or into our Coach Basics group, because that's what I did today. And I literally got on the phone with my new coach. We did a Zoom call face-to-face, -face, just the two of us. And we literally talked for like 25, 30 minutes. It wasn't much. And I literally just wanted to know her why. It, it didn't come down to technical stuff at that point, because they're going to learn all that in Coach Basics. It was just, let me get to know you a little bit. You ask some questions. What are you most concerned with? What are you most worried about? And then just having them talk to me about their why, why they want this. And I write their why down and I make sure that I have that written down in case there's ever a day where that coach comes to me and says, gosh, I'm really struggling today. I've heard so many no's. I just want to throw in the towel. And then I remember their why and I tell them that, right? I'm like, look, look, you told me your why and this is why you're pushing. Like really remember that. You know, it's worth pushing through those tough days. And that's what this call is all about, right? It's all about, <laughs> what was it? Why all coaches suck at this, okay? That's the title of this call. And the this part of this call is pretty much everything. Why we suck at pretty much everything. I know that sounds really stupid right now, but I'm going to explain further. None of us are perfect. We all have struggles. We all struggle in this business, and we all fail. We all fail. I am surrounded by failure every single day, okay? None of the leaders on this team, none of the leaders in this company are exempt from failing, okay? But it's how we embrace that failure and how we take the failures and we move forward, okay? So do you feel like a failure? And if you do, good for you guys because you are succeeding, okay? If you feel like a failure and you're sitting here on this call right now thinking in your head, gosh, you know, I didn't hit successful last month or I didn't hit the rank that I wanted to hit. When you feel discouraged, like, I don't want you to feel discouraged, but I want you to realize that, you know, it's okay that you feel like a failure. It's okay because that's part of the game. It's part of this. You are successful if you are failing. Not if you're staying down, right? Not if you're knocked down and you're staying down, but if you get back up and you keep on fighting, okay? And here I'm going to get into my failures, okay? 
And I have a list of them. I could probably go on for this whole call about failures, but I'm just going to share with you my top failures. All right. Um, so my first failure was my very first year of coaching. I was hitting success club. I made it my goal, right, to hit success club every single month. Like my coach just said to hit success club. I didn't really know what it was all about. And the first thing that drove me was knowing that I could go on a free trip, right? I was like, okay, I'm going to hit success though, because I want to go to this Disney World trip with my family because we can't afford it. And um, I hit success club pretty much every month of that entire year. And then Christmas time hit, and holidays hit. And I don't know what happened if I just fell off track. Maybe I lost some passion at that time. Maybe I got busy with the hustle and bustle of the holidays. But I lost two months of success club. And I'll admit to you, as a brand new coach, I felt pretty defeated. I was really wanting to hit Success Club every single month that first year because I wanted to be a Success Club all-star. Okay, and if you don't know what that is, it just means you've hit Success Club 12 months in a row. So you've met your goal of helping at least three people every single month. But I wanted that. I really did. Amongst, you know, the free trip and all the rewards and recognition, I wanted to take my family on a trip. So I really got down. I did. I cried a little. I was like, gosh, you know, maybe I'm not good at this business. And then I sat there and I thought, you know what? What did I start this business for? I started to just help people. And just because I didn't reach Success Club in two months doesn't mean that I'm not helping people. That number of Success Club clients is not going to define me. So I just said, I'm going to make it my mission every month from here on out to do my best and to try my hardest to hit Success Club 5 minimum just help three people so the moral of the story is that you just keep on going because I have hit success club 69 months in a row since dropping those two months 69 months um, so you can fail you can fail forward you can learn from mistakes and you can keep on going and honestly losing those two months of success club lit me up because I'm like I don't want to do that anymore I want to I join this business to help at least three people every single month and I'm going to keep on going until I do that every month. And I'm there, right? And I maybe thought I was falling short last month, right, in September. But I kept pushing through, okay? So the next failure, I, and some of you might know this, who've been with me a while. I know Heather knows this. I know I don't really see many other people right now. But I was a five-star diamond coach for three freaking years. Three years I was a dime or five star diamond coach. Um, <laughs> this is one thing that I defeated me for the longest time because I thought I was defined by a star. <laughs> I was like, you know what? You know, how come people can't look at me like I'm a leader if I'm five star for three years in a row and they don't see me growing, right? But a lot of people join this business and they don't know the ups and downs to those ranks. They don't know that, you know what, my first five diamonds are not diamond. <laughs> They're not anymore. They fall, right? And then you get five brand new diamonds. And even though you've dropped in rank, you got that five star back again. But I did get down, right? I was like, holy cow, like five star for three years. Like that's just awful. And I didn't think anybody could look at me like a leader because I hadn't rank advanced. But I had to really get over that. I had to think, you know what? I can't sit there and inspire my team if I'm completely feeling down every moment that I go live, every moment that I do a video, every moment that I get on a team call. If, I, if they see that I'm down about being five-star again, you know, that's going to suck. And that I'm not going to inspire anyone. So I, it's all the mindset, you guys. It's all your mindset. Okay? So even if you don't hit a rank, you don't hit success club, you don't hit what you want to in this business at the time frame that you want to, you just have to get back up and keep going. This year, I hit seven star. So I'm climbing up there, right? I did not give up. I've been in this business six years. I know that it takes consistency. I know that it takes a lot of failure, but it does take failing forward, and you just have to do it as part of the game. Okay? Um, I failed at doing videos and live videos more than probably any of you on this team. It's pretty pathetic. It was crazy. My husband, Brian, would sit downstairs, um, actually he'd be upstairs and I'd be in the basement doing all my videos, and I legit would take 50, 60 takes on some videos. It was awful. But like a shy person like me was like, holy cow, like I'd mess up every video and then I'd say, screw it, I'm done. You know, how many of you do that? Like go on, going live is scary, right? Like going live, you can't have a do-over. So that freaks me out even more. 
But doing just videos that I was going to post on YouTube, I would do it legit probably 50 times. And it got, it got frustrating, right? But I never gave up. I sat there and did videos every night. And Brian knows I just went and did the ultimate reset, right? The 21 day ultimate reset. And I, I focused on doing a video every day of that 21 days. By the end of the 21 days, I was doing them in like five takes, not 50. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's better, right? So it does go to show you that if you keep pushing forward, you will feel more success than failure, okay? Because you're gonna do it over and over and over again. Um, and then also, if you guys go into our team training website now, I did every video in one take, and some of the videos were five minutes long. That is something that I could have never done had I continued to push through that defeat and that failure never could have done a video in one take. So when you watch those videos, you know that like it was never like that. I would do them over and over and over again until I got them perfect. So it, growth happens, you guys. Growth happens through defeat and through failure. I feel like I failed at leadership many times. Being a leader, I feel like I failed at leading my team many times. But I only use it as growth. I use it as, okay, this didn't work, this team training sucked, and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do something different. Okay. And that's what I did. We have been an elite team, okay, and if maybe you don't, a lot of you do know what elite means on, on this call, some of you don't, some of you are brand new, but elite just means that you are kicking ass on your team for, for every year that you hit elite, okay? It means that you're signing coaches, your new coaches are hitting success club, your new coaches are hitting rank advancements, your new coaches are growing into diamond coaches, so they're becoming leaders. So our team, Team Rise Up, has been elite for five years in a row, which is amazing. Like, I'm super, super proud of that. This is the first year where we're struggling, where I'm like, holy crap, like I could lose my five-time elite. I, could, I might not be six-time elite this year. We might not be a six-time elite team, right? But I don't ever give up. I feel defeated sometimes, right? Like I'm like, Oh gosh, you know, like I want that. Like I want us to be recognized as an elite team again, but I'm not giving up. I'm there pushing the people on my team that want to reach that goal. The people that want to reach diamond, right? Like I need two diamonds. We need two diamonds on our team to reach elite. And I'm there with them and I'm pushing them every step of the way. So I don't give up, even though that goal might be far fetched, you know? And sometimes people tell me, I don't know if it's going to happen this year, right? I don't ever let that get to me. I'm like, I don't care if you say it's not gonna happen, it's gonna happen and I'm gonna do my best to do it. Okay, and we're gonna do our best as a team to get there. So those are just my top failures, but let me tell you guys, there's so many more. I could go on like forever, but you can fail over and over and over again, but it just means, honestly, the more you fail, the more you're gonna succeed, the more you're gonna grow. But it's all mindset. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that you can do something different to make a difference after you fail. So it's okay to fail, you guys. I encourage it. I encourage you guys to fail. You're human. I'm human. You're human. We all have bad days, bad weeks, bad months. Hell, even bad years we have, right? But the failing versus failing forward, okay? Here's the difference. If you fail, you fail and you don't get back up. You accept failure like as your new reality. Like, okay. I'm, I'm just failed. I'm just going to stay here because I'm a failure, right? Or you can fail forward. You can learn and move on. You can learn and grow. You can learn from your mistakes and you can, can get better as a person. That's failing forward. And that's what we do every day in this business. We fail forward. So there's a quote by, I think it's Henry Ford. And it says, failure is just the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. Love that. Failure is just the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. Simply just means that you're learning from your mistakes, right? You're just gonna get better. So I encourage you guys to embrace your failures in this business, embrace it. Mentality, like that's the ultimate success, is the mentality that you have when you do fail. I went to leadership, I don't know what year it was, I wish I could, but I remember this speech that Carl Deichler did at leadership. And I had to go back and watch it because I remembered it, but I didn't remember a lot of the details. But Carl talked about when he was, I think, in seventh grade, he was on the basketball team. He was a varsity basketball team. And their team was 0-17. They had 17 wins and, or sorry, <laughs> 17 losses and zero wins. Like they had lost 17 times and won no games. And 
I remember him sharing that he was getting in the car one night after another loss and his dad was driving him home from the game and he was sitting there like sulking with his head down, feeling really defeated. And Carl's dad looked at him and he said, um, are you kidding me? You played harder and tried harder than anyone on that floor. I love watching you play and that's why I come to every single game. There's huge success in the failure. Huge success in the failure. Like, it gets me teary eyed. It's just crazy, right? Someone is going to be inspired by you. No matter how much you're failing, no matter how much you feel defeated, you'll be inspired if you just keep on going, okay? You will fail every week. There'll be something that you fail at every week in this business, but you have to get back at it, okay? Am I surrounded by failure every single day? Hell yeah, every day. But am I more excited every day to fail so that I can succeed? Heck yeah, I am, for sure. Because that's what we do. That's what we do. We're human. There will be failure, but do we give up? No. We are actually team rise up, so we should be rising through those failures and those trials. All right, so the only constant, you guys, is constant change. Okay, so every time you fail, you have to think about what do you have to do differently to succeed next time. The only constant is constant change. The choice to not give up is where your success lies. Okay, so the choice from to, the choice to be successful comes down to how hopeless you feel at that time, right? Like you're feeling really hopeless that oh my gosh, I haven't success, I haven't hit success club. There's no way I can hit success club. It's the thirtieth of the month. The thirty-first is tomorrow. Do you make that choice to give up then and not work your ass off on the thirty-first day? Or do you work 10 times harder on day 31? It's all in your mindset, right? I know for me, I would 10 times everything on day 31. And I do my best to hit success club. So you keep pushing, okay? And then there's another story. At the same leadership event that I went to, I take a lot of nuggets away from leadership. It's a great event to get to. Um, there was a, a lady that interviewed a test pilot. And she asked him this hypothetical question. If your plane was going down and you saw a mountain coming into your view and this mountain was so close to you and you have exhausted every option, you've tried different things, you've exhausted everything, you're going down. What is the last thing that would cross your mind? And his answer was, I try something else. And she was like, I don't think you understand this. The mountain, it's like right here. It's right here. You can see it in front of your face. You've done everything. There's nothing else you can do. What would you, what's the last thing crossing your mind? He said with not even hesitation, I just try something else. And again, she's like, oh my God, you don't understand. This mountain is like right here, touching your nose. Like it's right there on your nose. You can feel it. How can you say that? Like what would be on your mind? I try something else, he said. He never ever questioned it. He never said he would bail out. He would try and try again. And that's what this is all about. So I wanna ask you guys, how do you deal with resistance? How do you deal, deal with challenges? How do you deal with setbacks? Like that's, that's this game, you guys. That's this business. How do you deal with it though? Because that's what's gonna make you, you know, failing or failing forward. We have the opportunity to help people in this business we have the opportunity to help them change their lives. When you try, right? When you try in this business, you try by getting into Coach Basics. You try by doing your best to hit Success Club. You try by doing your best to hit a rank. But if you don't achieve it, but you at least know that you tried the hardest that you have ever tried, and you will keep trying, that's all that matters. That's all that matters, you guys. You've gotta be a warrior, okay? And I talk about warriors, and I'm going to talk really quickly, and I might get emotional on this, but there's a warrior on this team. There's many warriors on this team. I could name so, so many. But the warrior that comes to my mind is a warrior who lost her dad last year. And you could think that this is a failure, right? You could think that, how can I run my business if I lost my father? Or if you lost anyone in your life, right? How could I continue on in this business and continue to share my passion and continue to share my love of life when I'm kind of questioning life itself, right? I'm questioning why this happened. Um, but this person, and her name's Michelle, and she 
is the leader of Team Fit Me, but she continued to fight. She continued to post on social media every single day. She didn't miss a day. And I can tell you guys, she never missed a day in sharing on social media in her entire like business since she started. And I always thought, you know what? My gosh, she's going through so much. I would totally understand if she didn't post on social media. But she found a way to push through that. And she inspired people. She used her emotion and she used her grief and what she was suffering through to inspire other people. That's what this is all about, you guys. That's what this business is all about. <laughs> you guys have to be warriors, okay? You have to know that trials are going to happen in this business and you have to keep fighting. Okay? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hmm. Because honestly, you guys, the strongest warriors, the people that have the steepest hills to climb in this business, they will get the furthest. They will become the most successful in this business because they have a passion for this, like you would not believe. Because they know that beyond that fear is someone's life that you need to impact, someone's life that might be waiting for you to change them, right? Someone that might be waiting to feel more confident again or want to be home with their kids. Or maybe they, they want to just feel confident in their skin again, you know? Those are the people that are waiting for you and don't let those failures get in your way because you don't want to know that that person is there for you, but you put this wall up because you had all this failure that was happening in your life or in your business and you didn't want to continue on because you could miss that person. Okay. So someone will be inspired by your trials, by your struggles, by everything that you're facing, but, and you have to, and you'll be fulfilled, right? You'll be fulfilled by the action that you take because you'll know that, oh my gosh, look, I faced all this in my life and I faced all this and all these no's and all these things in this business, but I never stopped. I still took action. I still tried something new and people will be inspired by it and you will be fulfilled. Okay. So that's the coolest thing ever. So, um, I'm going to come back after Heather talks and share my last little story, but I want to share with you guys some quotes, um, before I open this up to Heather. Um, these are just some quotes I was looking through as I was looking up failure, and they really stood out to me. All right, the first one is, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. There's only one thing that makes a dream impossible to achieve, and that's the fear of failure. And the next one is, success is stumbling from failure to failure without the loss of enthusiasm. Winners are not afraid of losing, but losers are. Failures are part of the process of success. People who avoid failure also avoid success. Love that. Failure is not a bruise. So, sorry, failure is a bruise, not a tattoo. So that just means it's not permanent. Failure is something that happens. It's going to be a bruise on you, but it's not a tattoo that's permanent. It's not going to stay there with you unless you allow it to. And then the last one is don't fear, don't fear failure. Fear being in the exact same place next year as you are today. Love that one. So you guys, I encourage you to build on failure. Use it as a stepping stone to your path to success. Okay. And I know Heather, love her. And I know that she has been through some failure in this business. And I know she wants to talk to you about that. So I'm going to open this up to Heather. And then I will um, end things when she is done. Are you, can you unmute her? Okay. Yeah, I'm good. So I was in the closet. Well, <laughs> You're in, the closet. in the closet. But don't, don't ask. Don't ask. Not in the closet that way. <laughs> um, um uh, crystal and i had a team call with our group uh last week and we were discussing um the super saturdays that uh just occurred and one of the things that came up that i wanted to share on crystal's behalf is they had barbie Calev um at their super saturday and she was discussing about failures and she was discussing about how People have this idea that when they see top coaches, they think that, oh my gosh, they're like gods and that they do everything perfectly and that they never stumble and they never have bad days and that stuff always comes to them so easily. Um, Barbie shared something that I didn't even know about. A lot of people didn't know, but she at one point was a nine star diamond and she dropped all the way down to one star. And I was shocked to hear that. I had no clue about that because you look at her and you're like, she's married to the beast and she lives this wonderful life and things just look great. Um, which got Crystal and I thinking that, you know, 
uh, one of the four vital behaviors is about recognition. And I understand the purpose of that, and I think that's important. But I also think it's very important for um, coaches of all, you know, all levels, uh, whether you've been a coach for, you know, a month or you've been a coach for five years, 10 years, doesn't matter. I think it's important for people to see the other side of the business as well, so that you don't think you're a piece of shit in what you're doing. Because I know that for me, um, I got down sometimes where I would sit there in the team page and I would see people signing coaches after coach after coach. They're signing coaches like five coaches a month and you're like, oh my gosh, how are they doing this? Or they're rank advancing and you're like, oh my gosh, they're amazing. Or they're getting, you know, these crazy success club numbers consistently every single month. And you're sitting here working as hard as you think that you're working or that you're trying to work. Um, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not signing any coaches, I suck. Or I'm not making any money, I suck. Or I am not rank advancing, I must suck. So I know for me that that's the way that I always felt until I would speak to other coaches who were a lot higher than me, where I would be thinking that they're four-star diamond, three-star diamond, whatever. And you hear when somebody gets to that rank advancement, but you don't know that they just lost it two weeks ago. You know, like you hear all these people, I hit diamond, I hit diamond. You don't know if they're still a paid diamond. You know they're lifetime diamond. But you don't know how they're busting their asses to get back there. You don't know how they're busting their asses to, to take it up to the next level. Um, you don't know that they may have signed, I don't know, 50 coaches in five months, but only five of those coaches are actually working the business and that the rest of them are MIA or that they've quit. Nobody advertises these things. Everybody advertises the good things. And I felt that it was important to put it out there for people to know that every single coach has a downfall. Every single coach has that time where it's up and then another time where it's down. And it's okay. And the thing is, is that, you know, you may be down for like two, three months and you're thinking, oh, this is not for me. It's too hard. I'm going to quit. But it's the same as your weight loss journey. It's the same as anything. If you quit, you're never going to get to where you want it to be. It's, it's just simple as that. Like, we all have choices in life where we can keep trying to truck up that hill and keep trying to get to where we need to be, or we can just quit. And if you quit, you sure as hell don't have a, a chance in how of reaching what you want to achieve. But if you keep trying, you have a better chance that way to achieve what you want. So, like, I realized that for me, you know, um, I hit... I finally hit my uh, my one star this 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 week, and at first, you know, Amy and Brian are sending me these messages in the morning, congratulating me, and they're happy for me. And there was actually a moment where I wasn't happy about it. I was kind of like, "Oh my gosh, I've been a coach for I'll be a coach for my five year anniversary is actually tomorrow uh, that I signed on as a coach, and it took me five years, five years to hit one star." And I could have either had the choice to sit there and dwell about the fact of it took me five years and there's other coaches that have hit way, uh, way more like in a shorter amount of time and they've done better than me and they've done this and they've done that. But the truth of the matter is we're all individuals. There's all these different variables in life that makes it so that my journey is not the same as somebody else's journey. I may get there faster. I may get there slower. And in the end, it doesn't matter as long as I get there, really. It doesn't matter as long as you get there. Um, so I just felt that people should know that because, you know, I've actually had people reach out to me because they see me signing coaches. They're like, how are you doing this? How are you doing this? You don't know how I'm doing it. And it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you, because you don't know if I'm signing coaches that are working it. You don't know if I'm signing discount coaches that aren't working it. You don't know what, how these coaches are going to turn out. Like, we just don't know. So, you know, if I would have given up four years ago, three years ago, I wouldn't have this fucking kick-ass team of girls that I love dearly and that I'm working with. I wouldn't have gone to Punta Cana this past February and, or April, sorry, April we went, and got my, my fire reignited back in me. I wouldn't be responsible for actually helping, like, like hundreds, I'm talking hundreds of people lose weight. I wouldn't be getting these messages on a daily basis about how I've helped somebody save their marriage because they feel better about themselves or 
or you know that they've left their jobs or that they they you know they feel they think better of themselves or want more for themselves or realize that they're just more than just a mother and a wife because that's my message to a lot of people is I'm tired of people thinking that they don't need to have sex with their husbands because they're married, their mothers, their wives, and their life ends there. Their lives don't freaking end there. They can have more for themselves. And that's the message that I try to put out to people every single day. So I don't care that it took me five years to get to one star, which by the way, that was my own fault. And I totally take responsibility for that because I half asked it for a lot of the time. So first thing, you got to be self-aware. Like you got to be self-aware and think to yourself, am I half-assing it? Because if you are, you're not going to get anywhere, to be honest with you. Um, But back on track, you can't give up. You can't give up because everybody sucks. I suck. But a lot of people who are seeing that I've reached one star, they're like, oh my God, you're amazing. No, it took me five years. I suck. But people don't see that. So all I'm saying is that when you see a lot of coaches signing people, rank advancing, doing all these things, you do not know what's going on in the background. You have no idea what it took for them to get there. And you have no idea the time, the effort, the sweat that they put into it. And the fact that they didn't give up. So that's why I just, that's why I uh, urged Amy to do this call tonight. Because I thought it was really important um, for people to realize that not everybody is as great as we think they are. It doesn't come as easy to them as we think it does. And you just, you just can't give up. And that's all I wanted to say. And Crystal wanted to say basically the same things along the same line. But yeah. Oh, thank you, Heather. Awesome. And yeah, she hit Star Diamond, which is amazing. And she needs to recognize the fact that she is amazing. No matter how long it takes you to hit a certain goal, like you achieved it. Like you did the work and you put it in. No matter how long you took, it happened, right? So, you know, as much as those self-limiting beliefs and those negative thoughts come into your head, like, gosh, you know, I should be so much further right now. Or, you know, I should have hit Star Diamond so much longer ago, you know? And I felt the thoughts too, like when I was five star for three freaking years, like I felt the same way as Heather felt. But I didn't let it stop me. Our mission is so much bigger than how long it takes us to get to some accomplishment, right? So much bigger, okay? I'm not, I'm not seven star diamond right now, I'm five star actually, <laughs> like, and I'm okay with it. I'm okay, I bet that five star is freaking haunting you guys. <laughs> I'm there again. Yay. <laughs> but that's what happens in this business. Freaking Barbie Decker, top coach. She's been like elite. She's been like top 10, I believe. Like she's been up there. Nine star to one star. It happens, right? We have to embrace the journey. We have to embrace that things happen. You have to understand that even if you don't hit a certain rank or hit success club one month, that does not define you as a coach or as a person. Our bigger mission is to help people. And I would hate to think that I gave up because I was like, I'm not good enough. I'm five star three years in a row and, um, or I might not hit elite this year. So I should just give up. You know, I'm not good enough leader. Right. But then I would not be able to help the people that I've helped this year. My, my challenge group right now is in prep week. They're starting tomorrow. They're on fire in there. They're ready and they're ready to go. That's what brings me joy in this business watching them succeed, right? And if I were to stop, they would not have that guidance. They would not have that, that person to believe in them. That's what this is all about. That's our mission. And you cannot let any discouragement or anything like that get in your way. You just have to keep on going. You have to keep fighting. Like that's what we are all about. We're about pushing through the trials, pushing through you know, anything that gets in our way and just doing what we started out this business for. Like what did each of you on this call sign up to be a coach for. It wasn't to be a five-star diamond coach. It wasn't to be a 10-star diamond. It wasn't to hit success with every month. It was to help people. That's what we're here for. We're here to help people the same way that we felt helped when our coach reached out to us and we joined our first challenge group. That's how we want people to feel. We can't let the technicalities of the business get in the way. If, if that happens and you hit your rank, you hit success with every month, that's awesome. But that's just part of the journey. You can't let it define you if it doesn't. And I want you guys to really let that sit with you. Really let yourselves soak it in and know that you are who you are and you can take as long as you want on your journey or as quick as you want. And just because someone hits a rank quicker than you doesn't mean they're better than you. It doesn't. I'm going to leave you guys with a story that was, I think it was the closing at one of our leaderships. And I will never forget it, ever, ever. It's always instilled in my head. And maybe you guys have heard this story before. But it's about an orange beach. There was an orange beach, and this woman went out to this beach, and she saw this little boy. 
on the beach standing amongst tens and thousands of starfish. And these starfish, starfish were all washed up on the beach. Tons of them, like everywhere, like, like crazy, they were all over. And this little boy was taking his time and taking one starfish and throwing it into the ocean. Taking another starfish, throwing it into the ocean. And this woman was like, oh, I don't really understand like why he's taking his time to do this because there's no way he can reach every starfish. There's no way. And she kept watching him. He'd do it again, one starfish at a time. She's like, maybe I should approach him. Maybe I should tell him that he's gonna be really disappointed when he realizes that he can't throw in every starfish. He can't, there's no way. She kept watching him for five more minutes. She kept watching him do the same thing over and over and over again and just take one at a time, throw it into the ocean. She finally decided that she was gonna approach him. And she said, hey, I don't know if you understand this, but like there are a gazillion starfish here. Like, why are you throwing one, in, one at a time? Like, I, I just want to know, I want you to know that it, you know, you can't get all these starfish. He picked up a starfish, threw it in, and he said, it mattered to that one. <laughs> Ooh, every time I hear that story, it brings me tears. It mattered to that one, that one starfish, right? doesn't matter if he can't get the whole freaking flock of starfish. He's saving one at a time, and that's all that matters. So every life that you help in this business matters. It doesn't matter if you help or hit your rank or hit how many people you're supposed to help that month. Every life that you help is a person that you are potentially saving from the doubt, from the self-confidence that they struggle with, from the overweight, from the health issues. Every person is like one of those starfish. Okay, so I want you guys to really, really know that. And I want to, you know, never give up, right? Like never give up. I want you guys to promise to fail. I want you to promise to fail. Promise to fail and we will succeed at failing together and we will succeed at rising together. So that's all we have for you tonight. I hope that you guys took something from this and I hope that you guys really understand that failure is just a part of the business. It's just a part of life, honestly, in general, right? But let's save one starfish at a time and let's go out there and save one life at a time. All right, guys? I love you guys. Have a fantastic Sunday night, and I will see you guys soon. Bye, and thank you, Heather. Thank you so much, and thanks for the idea for the call because it really helped me so much, and I hope it helped all of you guys. So good night, everyone. <laughs>